Lab B3, Redox Titration, Procedure 2. Here's the equipment that we need to get started and record the mass of the iron tablet into your data table. Now we'll add the tablet to the mortar and use the pestle to crush the tablet. It's important to get all of the tablet out of the mortar and into the flask that we'll run the titration into. So crush every last piece. Be sure that as much as can dissolve will dissolve as quickly as possible. Now I'll use a squirt bottle to trans help transfer the tablet. Some of it will stick to the mortar and so a squirt bottle will help be sure that all of the tablet makes it into the flask. And so once it's all transferred the flask will be put onto the stirring plate. Whoop, don't forget to drop in the stirring bar. Add a little extra water to be sure that the stirring bar is covered. Not too much but just enough to just cover place onto the stirring plate and adjust the location of the flask so that the stirring bar can twirl in the center of the flask and then move the stirring plate so that it's lined up under your burette. It's important to add a decent sized squirt of sulfuric acid. This will assure that the correct reaction occurs and the right oxidation state of the manganese forms. Notice that the burette read zero at the beginning and we'll start to add the purple permanganate into the flask. You could see that the flask was cloudy. This is caused by so many insoluble substances that are also in the tablet. And so we'll allow the permanganate to run into the flask. Moving along quickly you can see that stopping and starting again, this is necessary be again because of the insoluble substances. The pink shows up and then um, will clear after a moment because of the permanganate finally reacting with the iron as it is mixed up among the remaining insoluble substances. And the titration proceeds as more and more permanganate is added to react with all of the iron in the flask. The flask will continue to go colorless, or cloudy in this case, until enough permanganate has been added to react with all of the iron from the iron tablet that's in the flask few drops here and there. You can see that we're closing in on 20 plus mils of the permanganate added. And it looks like the pink is persisting at this point. It's always good to wash the last droplet off the tip of the burette and into the flask and that could be it. Be sure and record the final volume of the burette as it reached the pink that persisted. Next we'll take a look at the label of the iron tablet bottles. We did use the tablet from the bottle on the right. Be sure and record the mass of iron sulfate that's in the tablet and notice that sometimes calcium carbonate is in some of these iron tablets which I think is there to help with digestion. So that has an effect on the amount of acid that we needed to help with the titration. And let's take a look at what happens when we don't add acid. We get a very quick discoloration. This is due to the formation of manganese 4 which creates an orange precipitate and would cause the incorrect stoichiometry as well as making it difficult to see when the endpoint occurs. Important to season the burette as 
uh, if any water was left in the bottom of the burette from cleaning and the permanganate was added on top of that water. You may miss it, but certainly that permanganate in the start of the burette would be diluted and affect the amount of permanganate that you ended up using. And lastly, let's take a look at air bubbles. Remember we talked in the last lab about the importance of running solution through the tip of the burette at the start before actually making your initial reading because you can see here the presence of air bubbles in the tip of the burette. If you hadn't cleared that beforehand, solution would be left in the tip that you would have thought ran out and you would not be recording a correct volume.